Marietta in Sarajevo wrote, in Yugoslavia, the holiday spirit was not limited to specific religious celebrations. These were moments of warmth and joy shared with friends and family, no matter their religion. The new year signified collective celebration and new beginnings, embraced as a cultural tradition, fostering unity beyond religious distinctions. As a Muslim, I remember we shared these moments, exchanged heartfelt wishes, and decorating trees became a cherished tradition passed down to our kids, fostering camaraderie, warmth, and lasting memories. It evolved into a communal celebration, bringing religious differences with families together for festive meals and creating enduring memories. I remember even those Christmas cakes, their taste forever linked to the happiness of our shared times, embracing all holidays and valuing our differences as our greatest wealth. Beyond the cake's flavors today, it was the shared feeling in people that made them truly special. Finetta, who is an observant Muslim lady, helped me decorate my Christmas tree this year. We went shopping together for ornaments and then she put them up with me. And as is very common in the Balkans, Finetta had very firm ideas of what was appropriate for the tree and everything else. <laughs> While we decorated, she told me about her own trees and how she would decorate one every year for her children. The holidays in the former Yugoslavia, and particularly in Bosnia and Herzegovina, are more shared than anywhere else in the world. While some places have angst-ridden discussions about whether saying Merry Christmas is inclusive, Often the first greetings a Muslim will receive on Byram will be from Catholic and Orthodox friends. The month of December and early January will be filled with holiday greetings, particularly from Muslims. It all really began in 1947, when in cooperation with the goals of communism in general, the Communist Party of Yugoslavia banned religious holiday celebrations outside of churches and religious institutions. This definitely applied to Christmas, both Catholic and Orthodox, as well as Easter, again, both Catholic and Orthodox, and Ramadan Eid. But the thing about human nature is that we do not like to give up our celebrations. We need those days off, we need those parties, and so, in 1956, Yugoslavia officially made New Year's a holiday. New Year's was an important compromise. The patchwork quilt of religions and cultures in Yugoslavia would be in constant non-working celebration if they gave a nod to everyone's important holidays. And so, unlike Eastern European nations like Poland, that continued to celebrate Christmas, Albeit less as a religious holiday, Yugoslavia decided to scrap everything and start with something new. But it needed to be something everyone understood as well. New Year's was at the correct time of year, and so it seemed to check all the boxes. It was rather the same decision that the Soviet Union had come to as well. The next item of business was to figure out what celebrating looked like, but luckily a template was already in place. The government of Yugoslavia simply took the traditions of Christmas, added a giant party and fireworks, and rebranded them. Voila! The New Year's holiday. Complete with a New Year's tree, gifts, and a plethora of delicious foods as well as an exciting fireworks show to round everything out. This, then, is why our Muslim friend and employee, Finetta, had her own stories of decorating a holiday tree, as well as ideas as to which decorations were appropriate. Dennis from Sarajevo wrote this. 
As a child in Yugoslavia, New Year's Eve was not so much a big deal for me. But all about that time of year, the holiday season, was. Approaching December 31st was more about winter gardens, lights around the city, and of course, gifts, or as we call them, paketici. A paketic was a colorful bag with lots of holiday prints that always included some toy and lots of lots of candies. So all my memories about the New Year holiday are about a big holiday garden that was held every year at Skandaria that had lots of entertainment such as a carousel, electric cars, and the famous ballerina. Let's say it like this. What is Disneyland for today's children? That was Skandaria for us in that time. Another thing important for any child in that time was going to shows and getting paquetici. Every company in that time made shows with Santa Claus, elves, and princesses for employees' children, where at the end, they would give a gift, a paquetici. New Year's Eve was more for adults. They could get together, dress up, chit chat, have a nice party, and wish the next year would be better than the last one. New Year's in socialist Yugoslavia was huge, and I mean huge. Every year, the president, Tito, would host enormous celebrations in one or another of the Yugoslav republics, and sometimes overseas in his yacht. The hoi polloi of the Yugoslav communist establishment vied for invitations to these events, which often featured themed costumes and always featured the most popular Yugoslav entertainers. The revelry usually lasted into the morning and often included mingling with the public as well. In one particular celebration, Tito, his wife Jovanka, and his entourage chose to celebrate in Sarajevo, a party which ended up on a very rambunctious tram ride throughout the city. And so it comes as no surprise that as many who grew up in the former Yugoslavia have kept this New Year's tradition, which definitely falls into the category of Yuga nostalgia. Yuga nostalgia is an important part of all of this. Quite a lot of academic discussions have taken up the issue of Yuga nostalgia often in a quite lofty manner designed to talk down to those who miss the days of Tito. For many on the outside and some within, the term Yuga nostalgia is a negative one, one which wipes out the sins of communism in favor of a view that is rosy and uncomplicated, a Yugoslavia that did not ever actually exist. It's very important to view history and the past through a correct lens. Yugoslavia was definitely not rosy and uncomplicated, but then again, in some moments it was. In a personal sense, in the snapshots of people's memory, there were those moments when all was right with the Yugoslav world. When the multi-ethnic Sarajevo brought all citizens together for celebrations and children's gifts in Skandaria, when Catholic neighbors brought Christmas cakes to their Muslim friends. The Yugoslavia of Yuga nostalgia then existed. It's why Finetta and I decorated my tree together, because the tree was a symbol that belonged to everyone and not a constant reminder of how everyone was different. For once, Finetta and I had memories to share that weren't colored by war and death in our formative years. In a nation that has been diverse for hundreds of years, such small acts of acknowledgement and respect are vital to a peaceful and functioning society. In the years since the wars of the 1990s, New Year's Eve has remained a huge celebration, even as more former Yugoslavs are celebrating their particular religious holidays. But, there are still remnants of this shared tradition. In Kosovo, it's not unusual for Muslims to show up to midnight mass, 
to show respect for those who share Albanian heritage through the Catholic religion. In Sarajevo and other more urban areas of Bosnia and Herzegovina, it is fairly common for Muslim family friends to join those celebrating Christmas. But it isn't just limited to Christmas. If you live in an area with the Muslim population, someone is going to include you in their Byram goodies, no matter what religion or lack thereof you claim in your daily life. Obviously, with just 15 minutes or so, this is the barest bones explanation of Yugoslav Christmas. And it would be completely fair to say that we've glossed over quite a bit and presented a very rosy picture. Things are not always sunshine and lollipops, even in places that weren't ripped apart by war just a few decades ago. There is so much more to read on this subject. Memoirs that include holiday memories, historic studies of religion, and the religious events that shaped the region. And we could never manage to even scratch the surface in the short episodes we put together. But we hope we've given you a place to start. Remember, in history, to always go back further and make sure you can find these places on a map. Merry Christmas and Sretna Nova Godina.